Look, I heard about this castle deep cool thing. Actually, quite a lot. A lot of people were like, hey man, this cooler is really good. Should I have a look at it? Obviously, I looked at some reviews, and now that I've had a hands on, I literally can see what all the fuss is about. Good afternoon, morning and welcome to Turbo Total Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety or Wookie Triple XL. And I've been playing with this pretty much all of yesterday. I set it up, I ran some initial tests with some normalized testing. I do have a sound meter with which to do that. And I'm gonna be doing some live stuff for you on camera with it as well. So we set up some, uh, a little bit more scientific for the boys and girls to show some results for this cooler. What a cooler it is, I actually, I'm a little bit like stunned at like how good it is for the price point as well. I'm basically testing almost the exact same price. So we're putting this up against H100 with a normalized decibel test. And then I've gone through the various fan curve levels that I can achieve with this motherboard and then retest it for 20 minute segments at a time to see what its maximum capacity is. But before we get into the little bit of performance testing, let's talk about what you get in the box. Starting off with these fans, really nicely diffused RGB, some of the best looking lighting I've seen. You can see the LED if you really peer into the back of the fan, but looking at it dead on, it's really nicely diffused. There's like no weird LED shine through. Rubber mounting on all four corners on both sides. So what I would even suggest with this is if you were to mount it, you could use this between the case and the and the cooler so that the rubber is then sitting on the front of the case and it's going to completely eliminate any noise or hum vibrations that the cooler would make especially with the fans at full chat and these fans are got some rpm in them so that's a really really good thing to have it's just not present on the h100 the pump as well and the block itself is like really really attractive and quite clever i like the way that they've done the quick release mechanism over here so if you just take this over here for instance you can turn it over to the side and then take out the actual plate that's in there and then 3d print your own plate and put it in there and then it all gets all nicely infinity mirrored the mountings and the fittings as well were really really good they give you a little plastic shim which then sits between the actual bracket of that goes into the pump head and then the back plate sits behind like that did have to take the motherboard off because they've got some really long prongs on them um, so most of the time I can leave it on here because there is a gap in the perspex at the back of the mount over there and I can normally get them in but these are some extremely long prongs um, and that's because they literally go straight into the mounts at the top but they give you the plastic shims so that you don't over tighten it and then bend the motherboard there's absolutely no motherboard bend noticeable from an over tight cooler which is obviously really good for not only your motherboard, but for the CPU as well. And it's definitely making the right amount of contact. That much I can attest to, well, you'll see in the performance results later. They've also included two different hubs, one for the fans, which is really nice. The hub for the fan is incredibly good. It goes one into four. So you not only are limited to the two that are on here, you could put any three pin fan or four pin fan connector into there and then that will connect straight into the cpu obviously on the motherboard so all of it can be controlled rpm wise from one central location which is really really sick the rgb though is where things go a little bit pear shaped because they're using a proprietary connector from the fans so you have to use the usb hub it does have a built-in function and control set which is decently comprehensive it's got a couple of modes on there but obviously for those that have addressable rgb you are going to want to connect straight into the motherboard and then you have to use that instead of them daisy chaining the fans on you're stuck with that connecting block so no connecting block no rgb control at all even with their built-in controller deep Coolers is also quite an enterprising company because they've created quite a cool pressure relief system that's actually like has a it's basically a little bag that sits inside the top of the radiator over here with a one-way valve on the, at the end of it so what you see the grommet that you see it actually doesn't have any water coming out of it there's just a little sack of air inside there so as the pressure changes depending on your altitude or wherever you are using this it will atmospherically repressurize itself effectively so the chance of it leaking 
are almost zero because the, it's taking all the pressure off the seals that would be then obviously by the pump head and in, then into the radiator. It's relieving all of that pressure through that little thing on the side over there, which is quite clever. Look, it's a really nice way of doing things. And because it's relieving pressure as well, it probably means that your evaporation rate is going to be lower. Well, it just will be because science, it, it, where there's pressure, it is going to create some evaporation because it's going to be creating some heat along with that. And then if there's nowhere else for it to escape, it's going to push out and seep out of the seals over time, which is what happens with cheaper water coolers. And why they eventually die is because it's been evaporating the whole time and then the pump runs dry. So it's not going to run dry with a setup or it's going to take way longer because it's relieving like half of the problem. And that is a nice segue into the performance of the machine. So I've done a huge amount of testing. I mean, a huge amount of testing. I played with this thing for like three, four hours yesterday because I was so intrigued by it. I had to see what it could do. So the H100 has been a real staple for me over the years, uh, especially when I was working at Asus. We worked a lot with Corsair and I built with pretty much every single water cooler they made at that point in time. Um, and then when it came time to make a new test bench, it was just a natural selection. It's a 1700 Rand part. Everything's pretty decent quality and the performance is always pretty good, which is exactly what I got but it just didn't compare to the castle. So let's start off with the comparable like for like test and then I'll speak you through some of the other tests and stuff and playing and what I figured out with this cooler. So starting there, just looking at averages, you can see there was some significant improvements on some of the cores, especially the P cores, which is where you want improvement like on a 12600K, then you can see that there was some significant improvements. I mean, from say an, a, a, the CPU average went from 64 to 60 degrees, 60.6, 64.8. So call it a four, it's a 4.2 degrees, but call it four degrees on 60. That's a nearly 8% call it nearly 10%, okay, that that's improving over there, well, it's 8%. Then it's from 61 to 57 for some of the cores. So you can see just what, based on what's on your screen, there's a couple of degree improvement with the exact same noise profile. And that's just the general of what you're gonna see here as I show you some of the other performance results. But then I was like, this thing's fan to get this, to that noise profile was only sitting on 25%. So what about 50% and 100% and, and then what about an intelligent mode for the fans? So I set out to do those three tests as well. So if we look at the 100% fan, we notice it does drop even further by about another three degrees on average. You're gonna see two to three degrees overall, but that's then making quite a serious amount of noise. And I'm gonna give you an example of that right now. Okay, so now the fans are set at 100%. I'm very sure you can hear this over the microphone because it is getting quite loud, but I'm gonna be quiet just in this environment right now, hopefully without the chainsaw next door that's going. Uh, just to give you an idea, just use the min max on the unit T. So just give you, to show you that it is working, it is a functioning, I, I, I can't, I can't make one of, a fake one of these, okay? I'm really not that clever, I can guarantee you that. But if I just hit the min max over here, just want to reset it so obviously without me talking and i'm going to put it next to there and then show you on the camera how loud it is after the fact 12 seconds later so we hit 57.9 from that distance which is like well you can hear how audible it is but on the smart fan curve using the fan tune on on msi's thing itself if i go back to smart fan and then we have the smart fan mode which is obviously a lot more agreeable. And when I used it, even in ADA, even with a significant load under this, on the meter, I was showing up eight decibels less, which is almost 50, which is what I normalize test shoots for. That's where it becomes just barely audible. And I don't think a lot of people are gonna uh, be worried about a small hum from their PC. You know, it's just nice to know it's there and it's on. And once you put your headphones on, you're not gonna hear any of that noise that's coming through from it. But even at max chat, it still was under 60 decibels at a five centimeter distance from the fans. So uh, that's under an audible, normal sort of talking voice, which is what I mean now would be about 70-ish decibels. So it's pretty quiet, even at its max fan speed. But with the intelligent fan curve, comparing the 100% fan to this, they were almost exactly the same. There are certain anomalies across certain cores, like core three, for instance, 
went a couple of degrees higher than it did with 100% fan test. But it's, there's not such a massive margin that I would want to run it at 100% fan curve over having that. And then I think it peaks at about 50% on the smart fan. So it really doesn't need like huge amounts of fan curve in order to get good cooling, which means that the pump was working well. Because if you don't understand how oil cooling works, basically the loop itself gets like a thermal efficiency point and then everything in that loop is kind of at the same temperature. But if the water is flowing over the fins more often and being cooled by the fans more often, then that thermal efficiency point is just going to be lower because that's why you have fins, it's for surface area to, so that it cools down and then you cool the fins with the fans. That's why water cooling is still, people are like, yeah, but that's got fans in it because you still need to cool down the radiator itself. Unlike a car that's driving down the road that has moving air over it constantly, this doesn't. It's sitting still, it's in a static position. So our cars even still have fans because sometimes you get stuck in traffic. And then when you bump it to bumper, there's no other air for, to, to, for the radiator to have supplied for cooling. It's exactly the same principle over here. So should you be looking to buy a deep cool castle? At the price point, it's practically unbeatable. It throws in things like extra rubberization with this really clever pressure sense technology with a really nice pump head that has its own infinity mirror that you can take out the little piece and print on it. It's got fantastic RGB, really nicely diffused. Build quality is of the highest standard. I don't think at 1,800 Rand, there is a better cooler that you can buy in a 240. This is absolutely fantastic and that performance i mean the h100 has been around for what's it now it must be in like six seven years in the same sort of format it's very difficult to sort of improve upon perfection where that's concerned but this just takes it to another level and i can guarantee you because of that technology and this engineering that they've done over here with that pressure release system it's gonna last longer than almost all of its competitors this is really, really nicely put together. And I might just have to get a replacement for the test bench. The only complaint I have, really, is that proprietary RGB. I would have much preferred it if it was just a straightforward daisy chain system into an, into an addressable header. Even mid-range boards these days of two, 3,000 Rand come with addressable headers. So having a whole controller and stuff set up, yeah, it's nicer for old systems. But if you're spending two grand on a motherboard and two grand on your cooling, then you might be doing things just a little bit wrong. Anywho, that's all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.